All right, so if you've watched any of the other videos on this channel, you know that I'm really big on list posts and really just highlighting a ton of different games that you can play for the Steam Deck. And that's for a few reasons. Chiefly, a lot of people seem to like those videos, but then also I just love the Steam Deck, so naturally it's a lot of fun for me to go ahead and start digging through a ton of different video games that are available for the platform and highlight them here on the channel. However, what I wanted to do today was a little bit different because I do tend to pick up a lot of different video games, whether that's physical, whenever it comes to console games, or digital, obviously, as you kind of have to for the Steam Deck. And that's really what I wanted to dive into today, was really to just go over my thought process and not really hard rules, but I guess you would call them light guidelines for choosing which games I'm actually going to pick up for the Steam Deck. Because just like anybody else, I'm trying to make sure that I can stretch my money as much as I can and get the best gaming experience as possible. So that's what I'm going to dive into right now is just some of the things that I consider, and that's probably the best place to start is I tend to shop the sales most when it comes to picking up games for the Steam Deck. And that's the good news about grabbing games on Steam is there is always a constant barrage of sales, either directly on the platform or you'll find all kinds of third-party online retailers that also tend to have plenty of sales, whether that's weekend sales, week-long sales, holiday sales, summer sales, fall and winter sales, publisher sales. I mean, really just the list goes on and on. And while there are a ton of other great marketplaces where you can find good deals on games, whether that's for the Xbox or the PlayStation or the Nintendo Switch, Steam just seems to have a lot more of them. Plus, they make it really easy for you to just add stuff to your wish list, and then whenever it does go on sale, they will shoot you an email alerting you to that fact. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I only buy new games for the Steam Deck when they're on sale, but it's definitely one of the first places that I check. But aside from it just being on sale, one of the other things that I take into consideration is how much it's on sale. Now, so far, I've done a couple of videos about the Steam Summer Sale, including some games that I personally picked up, like Neon White, which is excellent, by the way. And also, I did another one talking about some recommendations that I would make based on my past experience with games I'd played a lot. However, as I've continued to look through the Summer Sale, and really any sale that I've seen recently, there's kind of this weird marketing trick that happens where just because something is on sale at all, it naturally makes you a little bit more inclined to buy it. But I kind of make a second pass through the games that I'm considering when I see that a bunch of them are on sale and I've already added them to my cart, and that is to see how much they're on sale. Because even though a game might be discounted a little bit from its normal retail price, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's discounted very much from its normal retail price. So after I've added items to my cart and I'm really going through, you know, which ones I want to pick up, if I find that a game's only like one or two dollars off, whereas some of the other games that I'm after are 50 to 75 percent off, I'm probably going to prioritize those over the ones that are I'd only save like one or two bucks, rationalizing that sooner or later they're probably going to drop more than that, especially if they were games that I'm not super excited about. The next criteria that I use when I'm considering which game to pick up next for the Steam Deck is, is it a game that I already have? Because generally speaking, I want to try to get experiences for the Steam Deck that I can only get there if I can, but naturally the problem with that is almost every game is available everywhere at this point. Although there are exceptions. Take Valheim, for example. Valheim was a game that I'd heard nothing but good things about for months and months on end, but it was a PC exclusive and had no port to console in any form, at least I don't think so, and I don't think that's the case now. But that was a game that I prioritized, and even when it wasn't on sale, I was excited to grab it just because, again, it was an experience that I wasn't going to be able to experience anywhere else. But a lot of the games that I would love to play on Steam Deck, I truthfully already have somewhere else, whether that's physically or it might be digitally thanks to services like Game Pass or PlayStation Plus. But even though I generally keep a lookout for PC exclusives to play on the Steam Deck, there are going to be some obvious exceptions. And one of the quickest ways for me to find an exception like that is if a game is exceptionally good and one that I haven't previously been able to play in the handheld experience because it wasn't available on the Switch. I think Elden Ring is a great example of that, a game so good that I've bought it three different times at this point, and I don't regret it at all because I know it's a game that I could dump hundreds of hours into without breaking a sweat, and again, the idea of playing it on the go is tremendous. So yes, even though I try to keep an eye out for PC exclusive experiences or at least games that I haven't already bought on like one, two, or even three other platforms, that's definitely one of the things that I consider whenever I'm looking through what's on offer in the Steam store. Next up, and this might be totally obvious, is I definitely consider if a game that I'm about to buy is going to work in some video that I'm going to create. Now, I try to be careful with that, because even though I definitely love to make videos about video games, clearly, I also want to make sure that I'm not only buying video games because I think it's going to make a great video, because I don't want to get to a place where I'm only getting games because I want to make content out of them. I love playing games as my favorite leisure activity, so it's really not something that I want to tarnish where there's like this sense of dread where I'm like, oh man, I have to get this game because I just have to make content or something. But I'm not going to lie, it definitely does factor into my decision making, and if there was already a video that I was excited to make and a game that I'm considering picking up would fit into that particular video that I was planning on anyways, then yeah, that'll definitely give it an edge when I'm going to make a purchasing decision. 
But that's the thing, I don't think it would ever come to a place where I'm only buying a game because it's going to make a great video, because for me, a great video has to be more than just a great video. I might find out that a particular video would be something that people would want to see, but it might not be a video that I'm excited to make. So I'm always looking for that sweet spot between what's a video that people are probably going to enjoy and something that I would actually enjoy making. And if I can't find the overlap, I generally don't make the video because I don't ever want to have to force it on YouTube because that would be objectively terrible, right? But if I've already got a video idea in mind that I'm really excited to make and I'm on the verge of making a purchasing decision, where the game would slot nicely into that video, then yeah, that would definitely tip the scales in favor of me actually making the leap and purchasing the game rather than passing on it in favor of something else. Next up is admittedly a totally goofy reason to make a decision to buy a game, and I've caught flack from so many friends who think it's a completely irrational thing, but one of the things that determines whether or not I buy a game is what season we're in. And the reason I say that is because for me, certain games just feel better depending on the time of year that it is. For instance, if it's cold and awful in the dead of winter outside, then I want to play games like Metal Gear Solid or Lost Planet or Valhalla or SSX. I think those make sense. If it's sunny and nice outside, like in the spring or summer, then I want to play games like Mario Kart or Viva Pinata or Splatoon 2. And naturally, fall and Halloween make for a great backdrop for horror games. So yeah, depending on things like the season or what the weather's outside, if it's a rainy day, I might be more prone to pick up and play a game like Oxenfree over something like, say, Sonic Mania or Sunset Overdrive. And finally, most recently, one of the biggest things that's been influencing my purchasing decisions are your recommendations. The thing is, a lot of you out there who watch these videos have vastly more PC gaming experience than I do as somebody who has traditionally been a console gamer. So with that in mind, I take your recommendations very seriously, and I do my best to reply to every comment and every reply on every comment, although admittedly that takes some time. And thanks to your recommendations, that'll be another video that's coming out in the next couple of weeks is a selection of games that I bought only because you told me to buy them, and I've actually been spending some time playing them so far, but yeah, that video should be coming out a little bit later, and I'll go over your personal choices for the Steam Deck and what my thoughts are on those individual experiences. So. Yeah, that's all I have for today. Really, I just wanted to have some fun and just kind of talk through some of the decision-making process that I go through whenever I'm trying to find new games for the deck. But hey, what about you? What are your personal criteria for buying games on the deck? Are sales a big factor for you? Do you, like me, also try to avoid games you can get on other platforms? If so, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to hear if you have some other criteria that I should be considering. As always, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you on the next one.